Okay, um, I want to just do a video that is about um, Descartes' theory of ideas. Um, that's in the th third meditation. Uh, so let's kind of just summarize what has been going on. Uh, I have a couple other videos on Descartes. Um, one which is about the wax, one's about the uh, the doubt and such. And yeah, I have one other one, I think. Uh, anyway, um, I just want to like think about first of all like the first 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 the first meditation has been his foundationalist kind of thought about how well since, since I can't you know trust my senses and such well, well, let's just remove those as as, my, as the foundations of my knowledge and everything else will fall and then uh, we're going to move on towards figuring out what I can be certain of and then he says well um I can be certain that I am th that I am thinking, and that I can be persuaded of things, and I can doubt things. So I'm thinking. So I must. I, I must ex exist. So uh, he moves. He moves from there. And this is just a general thing, cause like, I mean, when I first read the meditations in 2009, um, I. Uh, you know, you can get through them pretty, pretty quickly if you're just little, little looking for, for the basics. But then uh, I'm taking history of modern philosophy now, which my teacher, he goes very in-depth into them because he really likes them a lot, I guess, for some reason. And uh, he goes very deep, deep, deep into them and kind of th thinks about them. And that's what, what, what we have to do also. We have to write a paper about it, write a paper about how the, the, th the third amendment meditation plays a role in the whole argument of the whole of the whole med meditations. So I just want to read um, from the third meditation, if I can, about the ideas. There's are a couple kinds of a couple kinds of ideas, and uh, you know then we can think about whether he is he a idealist, is he a um, Objectivist, or what is he? I mean, the answer I would say is neither. Uh, but anyway, um, so now, as far as ideas are concerned, if they are c considered alone and and in their own right, without being referred to something else, they cannot properly speaking be false. For whether there, for whether it is a she goat or a chimera that I am imagining, it is no less true that I imagine one the one than the other. However, when you when you don't feel that there's falsity falsity in the will itself, um, so let's get down here. Among these ideas, some some appear to me to be innate, some adventitious, and some produced by me. Okay, so we have first the adventitious the first well the first time I'm gonna talk about the adventitious ideas, which are those that happen by chance or um, are spontaneous um, which is not really a, a big issue um, then we have the ideas which are set separated from things like a volition or an effect a volition or an effect um, is basically well we have a idea um, if I'm looking at a certain book um, then you know Ideas and ju judgments are basically the kinds of ideas that ideas are kind of just saying in general um, when I see a book that's a idea so in that way he is a he is a idealist um, when I'm seeing a book the, those general ideas and judgments um, have the possibility of being true or false and then he said here when he said oh I could be perceiving a she she go to work or a chimera um, it cannot be false that I am imagining. So, basically, what's being said here is that there are judgments, or there are ideas which can be true or false. Um, and then, furthermore, there can be the adventitious ones or the ideas which come from outside me or the ideas which are innate and come from within me. You know, in the second meditation, when he, when he gives his, his uh, argument via the wax, he gives the argument that uh, um, 
that when the wax, you know, melts, that I that I know that the melted wax is the, is the same as the solid wax, because of intellect, innate ideas. And then Locke later has a bit of a, um, you know, in in, in Locke's um, two essays concerning human human or not two essays on essay concerning human understanding he kind of you know re, re, re refutes that but uh I, ha I have a i have a video on that um essentially we have when we see a sun we have two kinds of ideas or we have two kinds of ideas of it when we have the sun that we see that we're, not, that we're not supposed to look at for one. We have the sun that we see when we when it's daytime and we see we see in the sky this little tiny this little dot, which is so bright. Um, a little little dot compared to me, for instance, with in in respect to perspective. And then we have the other idea of the sun, which is of the science scientific view, which is the sun being seven times larger than than the earth. So which one is from from in me and which one is from outside, outside me? The one from, from outside me obviously is the one about the sun being this small. Um, you know, the one about it being seven times larger than the earth is, you know, from um, it's the question as to whether is it, is it purely innate ideas or do the causes of my ideas um, resemble the ideas? Do the ideas resemble their causes? It's not a rep it's not a, it's not a representationalism by any means. It's not um, re representationalism is that when I see a book that there's a what I'm seeing a phenomena and a noumena which is which is behind it. Um, it's not that. It's what it is. It's basically um, that. The idea is caused by something. It's a causal issue, um, and he definitely is saying that there's no that, that there there's no reason to think that there's um, something something lying behind what I see. Um, this is it. He's saying. Um, he says that the contents of consciousness exists. He says that. Cogitatio est, and if you read more Schlick and the positivists, the logical positivists, you um, will, as well as, as well as well as Rudolf Carnap, you will see where he's wrong about about that, about the cogito or the kinds of kinds of consciousness. But anyway, um, it's an issue as to. Um, where do my ideas come from? And he comes to the conclusion, he comes to this little little idea that, this little thought, that ideas that are of the most luminous certainty to me, that I exist, and later in the third meditation he says, that God exists is luminously certain to me, um, these things are of the ultimate certainty, not of all, not of ultimate certainty, but they have something of what, of what Edmund Husserl would call a mark of, a mark of correctness, uh, or Locke would call luminous, uh, luminous obviousness, Descartes says, says something like that, um, it's a certainty, like a clarity, a level of, a higher level of clarity and certainty because of how clear it is. And uh, the idea of God, he comes to, you know, argue in the, th the third meditation is of those and must come from outside me. And if they are of this clarity and certainty, then, then, then they must come from outside me. Um, you know, um, and the idea must resemble its cause. We have the ideas from this from the senses, which he says it's, which he says is not uh, reliable by any means. And there's no real basis 
you know, in that to really, truly, truly go anywhere. And then, uh, you know, it's more question as to, you know, if they come from my, if the ideas come from, come from outside me, do the ideas re resemble that, resemble the, their cause, um, you know. So, furthermore, what is at uh, issue here is this idea that it cannot be doubted that we're perceiving things. So, whether, like he says, whether I'm perceiving a goat, a she, she goat, or, or a chimera, um, it's, tr it's wholly true and cannot be false that I am imagining or perceiving. So yeah, that that's kind of a little bit about the theory of ideas of Descartes. Um, it's just kind of a it's just kind of this this issue that he gives here. And, and what I think he's doing in the third meditation is trying to prove um, that uh, the ideas somewhat resemble their causes, um, and that. Uh, no, you know, it's kind of like a question. Um, it's, you know, he uses the idea of God because the the third meditation is called concerning God that that he that he exists. But the whole thing is to discuss that um, ideas do come from come from outside me. They're caused by things outside me, and causes. Are in e are in equal parts to the to the effects, um, you know. So we have this uh, issue here as to how is the relation between the cause of the idea and the idea, how are they related? Um, and he's going to come to the, a certain conclusion here that um, that uh, primarily. Ideas do come from outside me, um, and you know the the mostly certain, you know, foundational ones come from not from senses or from um, inside me, but from those innate innate ideas, or uh, which is not ideas that are inside me, but of the, that are of the intellect. And God must have, you know, if God, if if He says for about God that, you know, if if I, if God, you know, created me, then He must have given me this idea of Him, via my innate my innate ideas. So that, that that's just a little bit a little bit about that. Um, I'm just kind of thinking about those those things and kind of think about, you know, where the whole thing is going, where the whole third or the whole. Med or where the whole med med meditations go, and think about uh, how the whole theory of ideas will, will work into all of this.